Hello everyone, welcome back. So Rativas had sent this to me a couple months ago and GMRS is another one of my little favorite things in between CB and ham radio. GMRS is very valid. This is the RB86, a little compact GMRS radio that is programmable, that has 20 watts, it's rugged, it's made for outdoor users, Jeep clubs, four wheelers, and more. I'm gonna get straight into it right now, and then I'll ramble after about this and GMRS. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by HamRadioPrep.com. It's never been easier to learn about ham radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit HamRadioPrep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, HamRadioPrep.com. Okay, so the Retivus or Retivus RB86, okay, 20 watts on GMRS. It is programmable. They do include a programming cable and software. Uh, the thing about this is it does have only the pre-programmed GMRS channels and frequencies uh, in here and the co uh, codes and tones for CTCSS and DCS. But programming makes it easy because you can you know, store the repeater settings in your area. And then when you move out of that area, if there's a repeater with a similar frequency or channel with a different tone, you could program that in and edit the alphanumeric tag. So I'm gonna, I have this plugged in right here. Let me give you a, 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 a real quick first, a look at the screen here. And then I'm gonna show you about uh, the screen in a close up detail, but it is a little color screen. Okay, I have it set up on my bio window right now. I'm gonna turn this off and unplug this so that you can see it in a little more detail here on what this comes with okay if you're interested in gmrs let's say you want something that's for your jeep club your four-wheelers uh, emergency this would fit great in a little go kit a little go can people are doing that these days i want to show you what it comes with and um i'll give you an audio report because this is going to go in my f-250 diesel my personal vehicle and the reason I said I'd never put vehicle uh, radios in that vehicle is because, well, I didn't want antennas and all kinds of stuff drilled in my dashboard and stuff. This is very small, and this will work. Uh, if you're looking, we're going to unplug this for a second. If you're looking at the chassis here itself with me, okay, you will notice that uh, top firing speaker with a heat sink, and it's got a metal, metal case. It's designed probably to be hot, but it is IP67 waterproof with the microphone as well. If you like to go out and maybe have a bunch of beers at Mudfest, Mudfest and go out there and get wet in your golf cart, your Subaru Samurai or your Suzuki Samurai or whatever, and you're afraid of getting it wet, this is supposed to hold up to that, even the waterproof connector, okay? Um, a fan in the back to keep it cool at long transmits, a SO239 in the back for a standard antenna connection. Also have the USB, which uh, needs a screwdriver to get this off, but you can plug in the USB and an external speaker here if you want a really loud speaker out there at Mudfest or even just for emergency communications without using the top firing speaker, you can plug it in the back. So 20 watts and uh, very, you know, very solid feeling. I got to say, number one, this feels very solid. This resembles what my Ushan KG-1000 feels like and some other ones I've had over the years. It is not a plastic case and if it is plastic and I'm wrong, that's one of the hardest friggin' plastics I've ever seen, okay? It is solid. Um, so let me show you what it comes with, okay? The fused power cord, this connector here is different than what you would see. It's not a, this may be common for some other devices but it's not your typical, Ushan or Baofeng or BTEC, you know, T-style connector. It is waterproof, like the snap here, okay, waterproof. And it is fused here on the power cord and it's double fused on here. Now I put Anderson power poles on the end to give you an idea of what it looks like and to transmit in my room here for a minute, but it's just bare ends on the end when you get it, okay? Now the microphone does not use a standard RJ45 uh, type, and the, I'm guessing the reason why is because of the 
waterproof or the different designs. It's got a little gasket on here, which I've seemed to have, there we go. Okay. Uh, it's got a one, two, three, four, five, six pin round connection, which is small. It's not like a six pin Yesu. It's more like their own. But the microphone has a tactile switch. Uh, it is IP67 rated on the microphone. And it's got a metal uh, hanger here. So, uh, again, right here off the bat, I'm saying that this is for the ruggedized market. People that are either stuffing it in a go can, throwing it in the backpack, um, or even, uh, you know, Jeep clubs. You know, we'll get to the rambling after. Let me give you the product here because that's what everybody keeps saying. You talk too much. We want to see about the product. Okay, we'll show you the product. So, on the front of the microphone... You can control a lot of the features here, VFO, uh, menu, function, A and B VFO, and probably some other, uh, well, these are quick here, like if you hit function and eight, that's your power level. So I think it does one watt, five watts, and 20 watts, I think. I'll have to verify that in here. But uh, a lot of it can be controlled here. And the microphone connector does have a little waterproof thing on here. It goes in. Like that, it's got a nice tight fit. You screw it on. So another piece to the IP67 waterproofing. Okay, then we have the program cable and software, which is USB, um, and it's got the software. Now I haven't tried the software yet. I'm not sure if this is programmable with Chirp. Uh, you can look up online. If it is, I don't think so. Chirp is more designed for uh, ham radio use and uh, generic FRS businessman MERS and stuff like that. The only thing you really get a program on this, out of the box, you do not need to program this. Out of the box, you can use this with a standard GMRS repeater offset. So GMRS works like this. You got one, one through eight, no, one through seven, then eight through 15, then 16 through 22, and then 16 through 22 again with offset, positive or negative offset for repeater inputs, okay? So the only thing you really get a program is your CTCSS tone because you may have a repeater in Fort Pierce like the 575 machine. Then you may have that same frequency in Melbourne, but a different tone. So you can just easily go in here and change the tone or you can program that as you travel. If you don't travel and you want it for standard FRS, GMRS frequencies for emergency communications, it's already in here. You don't need to program it. All right. Um, they do include the, the mounting bracket, and that's great because it, would you know if there's uh, some new people here in the ham market, some manufacturers out there decide to make you pay extra for a mounting bracket. This it comes with it, okay? Um, and then you have your little baggie here. It's got the mic hanger, the chrome mic hanger, the screws to put in the, the uh, mobile mount, uh, a, a bunch of different screws here, I guess, wow. I'm not sure what all these screws are, but there are quite a bit of them. I think they gave you and extra fuses, so I think they gave you everything you would need. The manual, okay, manual is pretty clear and easy to read. I can't say anything more about it. Uh, it will tell you, you know, over the years when people like Rativis and Balfang and stuff have made these, people always complained about the manuals. What I do when I get a radio is I open the manual. You're always going to get, most of the time, an index that tells you this, this, and you're going to get a two customers. Thank you very much for using two-way radios. Well, you're welcome, but it wasn't because you made me. I decided to use it. You know what I mean? But they give you everything you need to know in here. There are some functions in here that you don't need. Two-tone operation, five-tone operation, um, you know, uh, just a couple other things here. It does scan. Uh, it does have a option for NOAA weather radio in here. In fact, let me get to that and read that to you real quick. NOAA weather radio, you know, the, uh, you know, all the VHF frequencies from 162.400 to 162.55. And you can program those into here, uh, NOAA weather with the software. There's not a NOAA button on the front of here. And some models, this manual may be, you know, generic. And it may not come in some models. Apparently, this one does have NOAA weather radio reception available in it. Okay. Uh, channel editing. So you can edit the alphanumeric tag, um, the CTCSS. And you can do that with the mic's numeric keys as well. So if you look at, you know, it's got some pictures in here. You know, very simple. If you're, if you're new to this and you haven't 
uh, install the radio before and you don't know red is positive, black is negative, you know, it will kind of give you an idea. So the manual is okay. I gotta say, the manual is okay. It's easy to read. Uh, some things are very basic, replacing fuses, it tells you how to do that. Uh, you got to connect the antenna before you even transmit. That is a very basic thing in radio. You cannot transmit without an antenna. You will damage the radio uh, and more. So, you know, CTCSS encode and decode, which is tone squelch. DCS, you got a beep. You got a uh, plus and minus offset. You got scan. You got a lock on the keypad in case you're out there bouncing around and you don't want it to get jumped off that frequency. You can lock the keypad. Um you know, the, the power level uh, changes, you know, all, all kinds of stuff here, all right? Okay, so that's really what you need to know about the unit. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to connect this to an antenna on a mag mount on that metal UPS battery back up there because that's all I have in my area. And I'm gonna be using this today. Now this is uh, the Compact Tenna Scan 3. This is, uh, I've made a video on this, and the reason I wanna use this antenna with this radio is A, it's not so big, B, it will cover GMRS and ham bands and NOAA weather radio, radio as well. And uh, also, you know, it's, it's, it's got a pretty good performance for the size. Uh, you can check out the Compact Tenna Scan 3 if you have a radio that does VHF, UHF, ham, and GMRS. This thing will cover most all of that. All right. So I'm going to connect it. We're going to see if I can make a contact on the local repeater, which is about 25 miles away in uh, by the Fort Pierce Community College. It's got a great coverage. And uh, that repeater is linked across the United uh, Eastern United States. So let's see if I can get an audio report on here real quick. Then I'll step through the menu and show you that just to give you an idea on what it looks like or how easy you want me to show, you know, how to use the front. Okay, so I have the radio set up. I had to put the antenna outside the window. I uh, just wouldn't make it inside for the receive. Apparently they were hearing me and I couldn't hear anything. So I have it connected to a bio and a battery. Usually... You want at least 12 amps of current to run this. So if you're using a 12 volt battery, you probably have more than enough. If you're looking to put this in a go kit or an ammo can and make your own little go kit thing, something like this, I've made a video on this, uh, bio -NO power. Let's get that on the screen here. There you go. This is a, a lithium iron phosphate or a LifePo4 battery. This one is rated at 12 amp hours with a max current of continuous discharging of 20 amps. Now, you, you shouldn't need anything that big, but I can tell you with this battery, I could run this radio probably all day. Uh, several days on receive, but probably all day would transmit at 20 watts, okay? So if you're using a power port instead of a cigarette lighter these days, you wanna make sure it'll do more than 10 amps. A lot of times, there's some power ports that say five amps or 10 amps. You don't wanna blow fuses, okay? Now. I'm gonna go in, uh, get a radio check real quick and ask somebody on the um, WQEJ577 repeater. I, I gotta say it in my head because it's got a nice little WQEJ577 repeater. And it's got a cool thing, so I have to count it out in my head. Um, okay, so let's give it a shot. I have the antenna outside my window. It is at ground level on top of a footstool. Okay, that's the best I can do here for this test, but this is, going to be in the diesel and, uh, you know, I'm sure on a metal roof uh, out in the middle of, you know, out in traffic and do a lot better. So here we go. WRCU 707 testing. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to turn it all the way up. Volume 15. 707, this is WRU Echo 980. Okay, very good, 980. Uh, yeah, I, I moved the antenna a little bit, uh, and I could I could actually receive the repeater now, but you're saying I'm getting in full quieting. Uh, just looking for no beeps, no weird tones, no hums, no hiss, uh, decent audio, and something that you can listen to on a daily basis, ever. Well, would you, would you agree with that? No, I'm asking before I keep transmitting to make sure there's no beeps or hums or hisses or anything. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that's a negative on that. No, it sounds real good. 
Very good. Okay, I don't get on this for Peter much less on mobile. Uh, are you local to the Fort Pierce machine, or are we on a linked net or linked uh, linked link here? Over. I'm a local. I'm down here in Mayor, Arizona. Okay, I'm up here in uh, Vero Lake Estates. So, uh, uh, not uh, probably about 20, 25 miles north of the repeater with the antenna outside. Just testing a little radio here, seeing if she's getting hot, seeing if it's working and stuff. So, I appreciate it. Name is Eric, by the way. And uh, the call is WRCU707. So, thank you very much for the radio check this evening. And maybe I'll talk to you while I'm mobile out in the field. 7 3. So it's working, okay? Um, he, I, I, I asked him for any kind of weird, you know, a lot of times you get on these these uh, repeaters with these radios, and sometimes they have a Roger Beep set, or they have some weird thing, and we hear it on the Sarnet in Florida, and it's like, guys, check your radio first, you know, make sure that you're not transmitting this weird Roger Beep or courtesy tone at the end or whatever. Uh, just with that, just a slight bit warm. Every time I transmit, the fan does come on. So if you're doing long-winded transmits, uh, the fan is going to be running the whole time. Now, here's the thing. With this radio or with any GMRS radio, you don't have to get on a repeater. If you're afraid of that, if you're nervous about talking where others can hear you in a wide area, look, we have a bunch of channels here. Uh, let me go to uh, which – how do I get to the other VFO? Okay, so here we go to the bottom. And this should be channelized if you can see this. You ready? So – Different channels, all right, um, FRS, you know, simplex channels, repeater inputs, GMRS simplex channels. Remember, there are some GMRS simplex channels that will allow you up to 50 watts, and then there's some that only allow you up to 2 watts because they're shared with FRS. But all the pre-programmed channels are in here, all right? And the uh, what I did for the menu option was I use the mic and I hit function, like for instance, function, and then number eight would be your power. So that's high, function eight is medium, function eight is low, okay? And you could do function three, there's your tone, 141.3. Uh, and then you could also hold the low key. Let's see, let me get out of this. Hold the low key. There's your offset. Now, the tricky thing about the offset is that gives you a VHF offset. That's what's weird, right? And you don't want to sit there and go up, up, up. What you do is you hit function. Let's see. Hold on. You long press, okay? And if I can remember how to... If I can remember how to do this now, right on the video, I think you dial it in. Zero, zero, five, zero, zero, zero. There's your five megahertz offset. Now you can do any offset you want, but for some reason it doesn't come factory with a standard GMRS five megahertz split. That's what's weird, okay? So if you're wanting to do the offset, you can basically just type it in. Zero, zero, five, zero, zero, zero. There's your five megahertz. If you wanted a one megahertz offset, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Okay? If you want to know it, no offset, you could hit, let's see. Hold the low button, negative, positive, off. Okay? That's how that works. So it's all in the manual. Uh, but it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, CTCSS, you know, um, if you want your, that's memory channel. Okay, if you want, if you have memories programmed, which I don't. Um, 
volume here. Volume 15 is rather loud. I mean, it's, it's good enough probably for outdoors, and you can hook up the external speaker as well. And, um, wow, that's pretty much uh, all you need to know about this radio. Uh, it works. I don't know what else to say about it, but the link is in Amazon. Now, for this radio, I can see right now on Amazon, it's about $120. Uh, they had Black Friday sales. I missed the Black Friday sales in order to make the videos, so you could have saved a lot more. My fault. Uh, sorry to Retivas for, for uh, having the radio in a box for two months and forgetting uh, or not getting time to make the video. But overall, uh, I think this radio is, is probably more geared for the outdoor environment, more geared for those who want to be out there and not worry about getting it wet. If I had my golf cart, which I sold, we used to go mudding that thing all the time. I would have had this thing on the golf cart, not worried about it. In the rain, coming home, whatever. Could have talked to your friends and family when you're traveling. My sisters and and my um, you know nephew and niece and stuff used to go out to River Ranch and the playpen and just go mudding all night, man. Have beers and stuff and go mudding. They could have had this with them because for some odd reason, their brother has a radio channel on YouTube, and they for for the longest time, wait, I got cell phone service. I can't I can't get a hold of him. He won't answer his phone. Why didn't they have something like this out there? I don't know. But let me tell you about the GMRS licensing. So you don't have to get licensed. I mean, there's there's a technical art to it. It's between CB and ham radio, right? And you just purchase the license. So you purchase the license and it covers your entire family. So I am WRCU707 and my wife is WRCU707, but she could use unit two, stroke two, whatever. It covers your whole family. So you buy one license, it's good for 10 years, and you're authorized to use this. What I would recommend, though, is to learn a little bit about radio. Now, you could tell, I could tell you right now, the person I just talked to sounds like he's a ham radio operator as well. And he's using GMRS to fill in in between. Uh, if you're not a ham radio operator and you want to skip GMRS, go right to ham radio. A shout out to my sponsors at Ham Radio Prep. Use the code ERIC20 at Ham Radio Prep. You save 20% on any course you buy. You'll get a ham radio license in one week guaranteed. And when you get your ham radio license, you get a handheld, you get something else over here. I got five or six of them laying around. You could also get something like this just for the intermediary or for a different type of communication. Sometimes I want to get off ham radio and get on a GMRS because there's a whole different type of people to talk to. Some of them are not hams. They never want to be hams, and that's okay. So I get a little more of a real conversation sometimes on GMRS when I talk to these people. So I think GMRS is a very valid uh, radio communication. Don't ever get rid of CB. Don't ever forget CB. Keep ham radio in your pocket, but enjoy it in the middle with GMRS and the, the Retivas RB86. So thank you, everybody, for watching. The links are in the description below for this radio. Look for some deals, and um, you might see this when I'm making a YouTube short or a TikTok or something. That's why you should subscribe and follow along. Maybe you'll see me talking on this thing. Thanks for watching.